All right, guys, this video is for Neymar. You've been out injured for, for 10 months. Your ACL rehab is not looking good. And if you're watching this, any other footballer watching this, this video is to help you understand the ins and outs of an ACL rehab program, the do's and the don'ts, and just how you should approach such a serious, serious injury, such as an ACL injury, which can, of course, end football careers, lead to tons of other injuries, cost you thousands of dollars, and the unquantifiable pain and suffering and regret of that time that you lose playing the sport you love. So we got some videos. Let's look at what how Neymar's rehab program first started. So they got some guys holding him down. <laughs> They're trying to force the range of motion back to break through some scar tissue. I had this during my ACL rehab. It wasn't as bad as this because in, in, if you saw that video, it, it, it went viral when it came out I th probably seven, eight months ago, at least, or more. And something was wrong with that whole process for him to be in that level of pain and them having to force something like that. You, you don't and you shouldn't have to force anything like that. Yes, like you can push through a, like a pain barrier of, of like four out of 10, five out of 10, maybe six out of 10, but you push any more, you're gonna create other issues that of course i imagine they would ignore so now fast forward we have some videos of, of him doing some rehab recently and you can see how he's really afraid to sink into his lower leg to to sink in lower he's very he's like staying very upright in that in that hip he doesn't want to bend the knee that much he's afraid to sink down and deeper because that's where he tore the 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 ligament and again these modern shoes with the thick cushion soles the uh arch support the heel raise the narrow toe box all that goes a big way to harming and atrophying the intrinsic muscles and the fascia of the foot specifically the the plantar fascia the arch if you mess with that area it's going to cause issues across your whole body because now you, you can no longer stabilize correctly. Now you no longer have the sensory organ uh, working correctly, which is the foot. And the fascial system now loses its connection to the ground, which is literally <laughs> how you stand, how you run, how you jump, is your connection to the ground, the ground, knowing where you are, your brain understanding, oh, if I land on a rock, I need to stabilize by using this pattern of movement so on and so forth so he should really have the, this functionality back this ability to land and create that bow shape he's he's as i was saying he's staying very stiff in his hip and that will create obviously some some more issues in the, in the future now he's doing some hops over these hurdles again he's he's very afraid to like land and like use that leg he's like he's 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 just staying super upright and like keeping his lower back uh, arched a bit, or not arched, but uh, bent over. So like he's basically, he's he's compensating with the lower back and the hip as opposed to using much more of that lower left leg. Somewhat similar here on these hops, he needs to get the shoes off and just get barefoot and start working from the ground up. That's that's the first area that, that, that the first area that he needs to fix because he has years of old ankle sprains and ankle tears that they did, you know, ice and pills and uh, injections and surgeries and wraps and braces and thick shoes. He has some serious scar tissue there that's going to limit how long he can play at the highest level. And it, I would argue that those old injuries cause this ACL tear because that's usually what happens. ACL tear is the camel that is... <laughs> is the straw that broke the camel's back, I should say. So now he's doing some stuff in the summer, uh, earlier, just like some BOSU ball stuff. This is all kind of like party tricks. It's fine to do for like for fun after the session. It's really not going to change the intrinsic functionality of your body. So again, single leg squat. A lot of this training is like what I would see uh, the middle-aged housewives doing in the gym to lose fat and gain some muscle. 
He's really, he's not, yeah, he's really afraid to let that kneecap move forward. And he's, again, lower back and the hip is doing all the work. He's just compensation because of this function. He's just afraid, which is normal after an ACL surgery, but, but 10 months down the line, he should be nailing a perfect single leg squat and being able to do a, a perfect single leg hop for at least a minute, feeling proper sensations. And again, bouncing on, bouncing on the knee with uh, the the uh, with the yoga ball, I think is fine. It's more of like an accessory thing to work on your coordination and maybe even potentiate the the nervous system for some more complex movements afterwards. But yeah, th this is not something that I would say is a center place in an ACL rehab program. But down the line, as as something more advanced, it might be helpful. But it's it's a very small piece. And again, he needs to be outside in the, in the sunlight. His body is so screwed up from all the late nights on Twitch streaming. His mitochondria is absolutely shot. So next video, some foam rolling, uh, some banded stretch work, with, which is not going to, to help or deal with any underlying muscle tension. And this some random movements. And then here we go. We have, we have the banded glute work, which it just like honestly makes no sense if you know anything about how the body works. You cannot specifically isolate and target a muscle and force it and force it to contract and then expect it to work optimally inside the whole system afterwards when you're running and moving unconsciously, which is how it has to work in terms of human performance. How it really works is the plantar fascia in the bottom of the foot has a connection through the posterior chain up, up through the fascial network to the hamstrings, the glutes, the abdomen. All of that is one seamless connection. And that's how the glutes contract holistically, the whole glute muscle group, not just one specific muscle on the outside by your hip, which is all this Benna stuff does. All these trainers, the reason why they think it's good is because they're not athletic themselves. They don't have <laughs> the fascial biotensegrity of, of an elite athlete, which Neymar does have, but is obviously corrupted because of you know, all these injuries. So here we go, doing some more random knee stuff, Bosu ball stuff and big shoes, some more banded work kettlebell stuff like looks like looks like a little bit better but it still looks like a middle-aged housewife workout in the gym to burn fat and lose some calories yeah and again like this is just like grinder stuff like it needs to be outside in the sun barefoot on the grass becoming healthier and, and stronger and then here we go got the deadlifts Yeah, I mean, some of that stuff can be okay if if his knee really really needs to gain a lot more muscle mass. But at nine, ten months post op, he should be way past that that point in time in the rehab program. All right, so those were two videos. Uh, for anyone watching this who's going through an ACL tear or had one beforehand, there's three areas that. I think are very important to look at from the off. Number one is myofascial ad adhesions in the calf, hamstring, quads, hip flexor, TFL, adductor, anywhere up, up or below the knee is very important to work on adhesions that obviously led to some problems in your, in your biomechanics that led to the ACL tear when you were running or jumping or however it happened. After that, the big thing for Neymar especially is that foot functionality, the toes, the arch, the uh, anterior tibialis tendon in the ankle. Those three things need to work optimally for his ankle to actually be able to hold some stiffness. And that is what most of the time prevents any kind of knee injury is the ankles doing their job. Now, he he's had so many ankle sprains and, 
and other things in the past that that is probably the first area that I'd focus on the most with him is fixing his feet, making it so that he can actually like hop on both feet for five minutes and, and feel good afterwards and, and not feel corrupted. The third area is going to be muscle tension, the calves, hamstrings, quads, and uh, the groins. Because basically from all this training, all his career, his set point of muscle tension is not at zero. He needs to learn to get those muscles down to relax again so they can contract all the way to 100. So those are the three areas. If you're going through an ACL tear or if you're if you're you know on your way back from an ACL reconstruction that I would look at first and foremost and check off before you do anything else. If you're looking for help to create a plan for yourself, if you're a pro player, if you're a non-pro uh, player, we have programs for both that offer like one-on-one -on -one coaching to build a customized program for your ACL rehab and to make sure you make sure first of all you never tear it again and two you fix the underlying root cause which mainstream th physical therapy name ours trainers most surgeons you know all surgeons do not care about because they make more money when you're hurt i make money when you're healthy and feeling good so with that guys hope you guys Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys for the next one.